Good, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome, friends and family from around the world to the Energetic Life Now show. I am your host, Eric Stenlake, and it is an absolute honor to have you guys joining in and tuning in from all over the world. It is it is amazing to have you guys here. Now, listen, you might be looking at your clock going, hey, it's 510. Yes, we've had a few uh, mishaps with Eduardo there. Uh, Eduardo, wave to, the, wave to everybody so they uh, they can see you. Uh, he has had some power outages going on at the station there uh, because of a big snowstorm. So uh, we're we're glad that you guys have tuned in uh, anyway, and thank you guys so much for being here. Today's show is being brought to you by Bangladesh World Network on Zingo TV, channels 250. And uh, please remember, the Zingo TV app is free, and when you uh, grab it for your iOS or Android device, uh, please leave us a like, a share, or a comment. We really, really love to have that feedback. The app is free, of course. Zingo TV is also available on the cool Google Chromecast, Amazon Fire, Fire TV, Roku, Roku Sticks, and on all smart TVs 2016 and forward. Now, listen, Energetic Life Now family and friends, you know I only bring the best of the best to the best show on the planet and today tonight and whenever you get a chance to watch this there is no exception because welcoming to the energetic life now show is the amazing chuck hogan round of applause for the amazing chuck hogan Woo chuck how you doing brother i'm wonderful my friend great to see you, eric great to see you too and thanks so much for being here and tuning into uh our great family um, now, listen, as you guys are getting ready to watch this show with us, I got I to gotta tell you, I got to tell you, make sure that you have something to write on because I, I'm going to guarantee you Chuck is going to drop what I call the Chuckisms. And they are gold and they're dropping. And it's it's like every couple, oh, that was really good. Hang on a second. And you write down. So be sure you have something to write where the Chuckisms are going to flow. Now, Chuck. Listen, uh, just amazing to have you here and just so grateful uh, to you. Chuck is an amazing, amazing expert. He's got his own show. Chuck, show it about yourself, what you do, and where people can find you. Oh, thank you so much, Eric. So uh, much like yourself, yes, I have a show on the Spanglish World Network as well uh, called Your Best Life. And it really runs in tandem with the nuances of your show um, where – we're literally helping people to move again. You can live your life or you can live your best life. And so it's literally about moving people from being alive to thrive. It, it really is your moniker. Um, I've been a neurostrategist now for the better part of 30 years. Uh, I spent about 22 of those years with Mr. Tony Robbins traveling all over the world as a senior trainer and helping to support people in their pursuit of life enhancement. And the reason why I don't call it personal development, it's real simple <laughs> is at the end of the day, are you really developing yourself or are you looking to live a better life? So it's just enhancing the beautiful thing that we actually call life, this body that we've been blessed with, this mind, this spirit, so we can co-elevate with other people and resonate at a different frequency. So that's that's literally what I do. And I get to help people grow their businesses in tandem with their faith, family, fitness, and finance. So it really is about, again, thriving in all aspects of life. And that's me in a nutshell. Oh, that's it. Thanks so much for sharing that. Um, so I, I'm just so, so grateful to you being here. And I know I've got a lot of, a lot of friends and family on uh, right. So I'm giving a big shout out to my besties. You know where you guys are. You're watching besties. Great to have you guys here with us. And uh, to my very first YouTube subscriber, uh, Miss Ruby, who will be catching the show later because she's at softball practice. Um, but great to, uh, great Great to have you here as well, Miss Ruby. Um, Chuck, tonight we're going to be talking about parenting, our favorite topics, parenting relationships, and communication. Uh, and we know that, as as you said, the word tandem, uh, it's all tandem. It's all intertwined, really, uh, within these three spaces of parenting relationships and communication. Yes. So um, it, do, do you want to open this up for us? Uh, because I know that this is something that's really near and dear to your heart as well. It really is. You know, Eric, some years ago, I, I created this philosophy that in order to be a better human being, I actually needed to start to love and appreciate myself. Um, it was the strangest thing because there was this occurrence. And I remember 
going back almost 20 years ago now, I was literally working between 75 and 100 hours a week. And I'm not embellishing. That was multi involved in five, six different companies all at the same time. And we were raising a young family. And in fact, my first child was born 23 years ago. And I started understanding as I was spending more time because I really felt, and, and, and I'll say this very clearly, in my mind, I thought I was giving my family what they needed, more things and stuff, bigger house, better cars, more trips. And what they were getting, what was left of me, they weren't getting the best of me. And so I developed this moniker in my head. And it was like this saying when I'm driving home, I said, my family deserves the best of me and not what's left of me. So that worked for about nine months. And then all of a sudden, I started, honest to goodness, Eric, I started feeling tired. I'm like going, this was great. And it's still great. They're happy. I'm exhausted. Like, I'm, I'm adrenally fatigued at this point. I'm like going, okay, something's got to shift. And then it hit like a ton of bricks. And I was like, mm, Bueller, Bueller. Like, what? what? For, for those of you, the Ferris Bueller's Day Off reference, I was just like, okay. I was like, hmm, what would Ed Froman in the sauce? No. Uh, so <laughs> I was like, what, what would a smart person do? And I said, well, you cannot put the oxygen mask on someone else till you put it on yourself. And I said, oh, wow, 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 wow. I said, my family and I deserve the fa – my family and I deserve the best of me. So if that means – eating nutritiously, getting enough sleep, working out, making sure that I take care of myself. Because if I'm trying to fill everyone else up from an empty cup, and then they go, oh, that's great for your family and you. And I said, no, it's a level three relationship. It's good for me, it's good for my family, and it's good for everyone else. Because when Chuck Hogan is present, and I'm being my best, I'll always do my best. See, I realize this in relationships. There's a lot of people who are doing their best and never being their best. They're trying to, but you don't try and move a chair. You either move the chair or you don't move a chair. It, there's no trying. It's kind of like being like Yoda. Do or don't do. There is no try. And so this is the same principle in our lives. When we commit to something, you don't decide, oh, it's a good time for your heart to beat. There's this kind of, I'll say, neural encoded central processing system that takes effect in our bodies. And it's beautiful, thank goodness, because I don't have to think about breathing, my eyes blinking, my heart beating, which is over 100,000 times a day. So let's keep going with that. That's a great trend. I like that one. And I started to realize this that every single thing in life, better business is relationship. Better connection to God, spirit, universe is a relationship. If it's communication, the poorest communication that most people ignore and depreciate is the communication with self. Because there's about eight different minds that are all coalescing and living in this body. Yes, you're civil. You may not believe this, but we all have these multiple personalities that come out in different modalities of our lives. And it's all about relationship. It's all about communication. And this is the richness of life where we can learn different strategies for communication skills. The truth is everything we do, everything we be is to meet a feeling, is to meet a need. And that need is to be connected, not to just ourselves, but to others. And this was what creates so much of an enriching environment. So to your point, I mean, and I, yes, I'm very impassioned by this because I started to realize this one facet. I know so many people who are decamillionaires, centimillionaires, and quite frankly, we know a couple of billionaires. Yeah, they're, 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 they're doing fine. They're doing fine. Here's the difference. They're not being their best. They're doing their best in one modality and they have insane success. And so they think that that success bleeds over to all the other portions of their life. So their finances are great, but their family, their faith and their fitness, not so much. So this rising tide, but the challenges, they're all anchored together. So now all of a sudden they're like going, whoa, okay, I'm being limited here. In what? Happiness, fulfillment. Mm. 
not a great feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's absolutely amazing. Um, I, of course I'm writing notes. You guys writing notes for you. You're already capturing the, the Chuckisms that he was dropping. Where did you get into that? Wait, pause, rewind, go back. Cause you got to get those. Listen, I love that. Do, you know, I want to give to the people that are important in my life, the people that are in my, um, <laughs> the circle of trust, the, the best of me, not the rest of me. And, and how do I do that? How do I create that harmonious balance between all of that to know I've got to make sure that I take the time that I need mm. to be in harmony with myself? Yes. Whether that is getting out in the sun, getting out in nature, whether that's getting into the gym and bam and hitting it, right? Because if I'm not feeling my best, if I'm not pleased with what I'm, where I am, I am going to, I'm going to be out of balance. I'm going to be out of whack. And there's going to be that part of me that is not in harmony. Yes. And, and, and really Chuck, like that was, that was just beautiful because what of those spaces that Chuck said a minute ago, and, and Chuck, I'm going to ask you to repeat those for everybody, if, if, if you will, in a second, what piece of that for you listening to that do you need to target for you to say yeah i need to be in better harmony this is a place for me to start could you please repeat those four areas that you were that you said a minute ago absolutely it's faith family fitness and finance we call these the four pillars and we've added two modalities to this eric which are really kind of fun because we actually said fun and fantasy as well see these are areas that people have forgotten. And when you're a child, everything's about fun. Everything is about expansion, growth, progression. And we know that progress equals happiness, that there's actually a success formula and progress equals happiness. Where most people fail to communicate what it requires in order to create the progress is possibilities. See, the human condition is such that when we know that there's something more than what we can just see, this glass ceiling, like where we keep hitting our head, it's like, well, wait, wait, no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. There's way more. And all we need to do is to slow down. Because our brain, this beautiful filter, this amazing apparatus, is constantly looking, and this is going to sound strange to you all, it's looking for evidence. It's not looking for positive or negative. In fact, your brain does not process, process positive or negative. And we can test this theory. If I were to ask all your viewing audience right now, don't look for the elephant. Don't, I don't, no, no, squirrel. No, don't look for the elephant. And here's the interesting part. There'll be some of you that'll be like glancing and you, you won't even know why because your brain loves puzzles. It loves answers. And so it will look for an elephant. That's not even there. And in fact, the instruction or the ask was don't look yet. You will look. So here's the crazy part. Wherever you turn your reticular activating system. And this is, this sounds very sciencey. Just know this where focus goes, energy flows. Yep. So if I go, don't look for the elephant, guess what? I'm going to be looking for this elephant. Don't look for problems. You know what you're going to get more of? More problems. Yeah. Because the brain literally will turn the focus and attention and your frequency. That's right. Who you be, not who you think you be, who you be will literally turn your energy there. You're going to attract other people that have problems. Why? You weren't looking for them. You're trying to move away from them. But what you're trying to move away from is what you'll get more of. That's the way that the law of attraction works. Yeah. Now, to your point, and this is something that's uber important in this entire conversation, and that is we don't have to do anything. We get to. We get to. When you finally make this determination that your life is a blessing and you get to decide the universe, spirit, God, Yahweh, Jehovah, Allah, Buddha, Vishnu, I can go on and on. The, the point of being is the universe has conspired to give you the opportunity to grow. 
And if you're not growing your, yeah, the universal law says if you're not growing, you're dying or perishing yeah, or withering away. Mm -hmm. Why do I state this so evenly and clearly? Because it's a universal law. It's not mine. It's not Eric's. This is literally life. Yeah. And one of the biggest challenges, and we're educated about this from the time that we're itty bitty witty little, you know, beings in this earth. There's two fallacies that we're fed and they say, oh, work life balance. And I go, doesn't exist. Sorry. It's an anomaly. There's harmony. There's synergy. But think of it like a yin and yang symbol. Don't think of it like a teeter totter. Yeah. Because here's the truth. In business and in life, you can't measure what's not moving. Mm -hmm. So if you're straddling the teeter totter and it's not moving and you're doing little micro movements, you're surviving. You're getting by. You're alive, but not thriving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what creates polarity? The ebb and flow, the up and down. And the truth is, I actually look at it. I'm, I'm from Japan originally. And so... Um, in that and part of my ancestry, the yin and yang symbol becomes extremely important. But let's think about the construct of that. It's in motion. It almost looks like a teardrop and it has a tail. The interesting part is there's a polarity pearl opposite color in each one. And I go, oh, I love that because now it's in motion. And what it's seeking is a homogenous synergy, our harmonic balance. But we go, well, Chuck, you said there's no balance. There isn't because it's in motion. So it creates its own gravity. What a beautiful concept that you are in a constant state of flux. You're not broken. You're in different shifting cycles in your life. And what a beautiful, I'll say, ideology to be in these different reasons and seasons for different modalities. Because you brought up something, Eric, and I'm going to ask a question if I may. And I'd love to hear your feedback on this. Are you the same person in your faith as you are when you're in a financial situation? My same person financial. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask it a slightly more specific way. Are you the same person in the boardroom and the bedroom? I don't think so. Thank you. Yes, that's a great answer because I know some people who are the CEO in the boardroom and in the bedroom. And I'm like, how's that working out for you? <laughs> okay, if I'm going to have serious motion, Yang, um, it's that working together yes i think that i look at the areas of my life my faith my family my my fitness and my finance now we're adding fun and fancy to that right like how where am i strongest where mm. am i most confident yes. where do i feel like i am thriving and where do I feel like I'm more alive? Yes. And I think for I, I think for me, that's when I really step back and go, okay, if I'm truly honest with myself and, and I realize I'm not in harmony here, then what do I need to do to begin taking some 1% shifts? I, I like to sure. think the 1% the shifts and then begin to consistently make those deposits of energy and, and intention and attention into that. Because over time, those consistent deposits of energy that go in begin to mount up, right? Yes. And 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 literally, I close the gap on where I want to be and where I am now. And then all of a sudden, I look back and go, "Wow, look how far I've come! Oh, look what I'm doing! Look what look what look what is happening!" And that is so exciting for me. And that's when I'm just like, bam, I love who I am. Yes. And I get to I, I get to look at myself and say, and 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 my mantra is I am a champion of power, hope, energy, and love. That is what I say every day to myself when I get up.
That's beautiful. I and walk out the door and I am ready. And I say, I am a, I am a champion of power, hope, energy, and love. I am going into the world today. I am going to make a difference. And my word for 2024 is impact. And, I, and I'm walking out the door and I'm going to live impact 2024 today. Beautiful. Beautiful. And I will remind your viewing audience that your mindset, and it's a beautiful mindset you've cultivated, your mindset is based on your heart set. See, oftentimes what people have a tendency to forget is that every emotion is actually a, a proposition of self. So if we actually turn that RAS, that reticular activating system, towards the top three ways we need to feel most often during the course of a day, it will be the lens and filter that we use in all the modalities of our life, in faith, family, fitness, fun, and fi fantasy. And it's like going, wait a second, what? I go, yes. So if you choose to be humble, if you choose to be grateful, if you choose to be value oriented today, if you choose to be intentional, and here's what's beautiful about this, that filter emotes a different sense of your personalities that are all within you. And we get to show up. It doesn't mean that you won't experience challenges. It will just mean that you've actually found a way that these are the ways that you've elected, you've chosen to turn your frequency. So you're listening to smooth jazz all day, or you might be top 40 dance music all day long. Knowing you, it's definitely top 40 dance music all day long. And here's what's great about this, Eric. You will live in that space and then going, how can you be so happy in this? And you're like going, what do you mean? This is a great challenge. Look at how much growth we get from this. Look at all the lessons and the learnings and the value and the, the extrapolations that we get to make. I go, because it's never about the event. It's the meaning that we attach to it. And we're all meaning makers. Yeah. I go, ooh, ooh, this is kind of cool. Why? Because you can actually check in. So I have a two and a half minute exercise that we've actually developed for many of, I'll just say, people that we get to engage with. In the morning when you wake up, to your point, Eric, I love that you have affirmations. I love that you set the intention of the day, and that's where your focus goes because we know where, that's where energy flows. And we also know this, ordinary things done consistently produce extraordinary results. Ordinary things. Yeah. Breathing's beautiful. You want better abs? Crunches. You want better sinewy muscle, fast twitch, push-ups, body weight workout, squats, lunges, jumping jacks, calisthenical movement. It's remarkable. And the results that you get are unparalleled. So why do I go there? Well, if we pick three ways that we need to feel most often and we write them down in our journal, some people actually make it their screensaver for the day. And they're going, hey, here's the top three ways. I just took a photograph of it. It's my screenshot. I'm going to remind myself because why I get to. I've committed to this. This is my life, and I'm going to craft it. I'm going to be the I'm going to be the author of my own experience. And at the end of the day, ask yourself these three questions: How did I feel most often today? Huh? It was a really good day. Great. What does that mean? What does it mean to me? Huh? That I'm not broken that even in the face of adversity that I can deal with situations in a positive way, in an affirmative way, in a kind way. Huh, that was really cool today. And then you get to ask yourself the final question. How do I need to feel tomorrow? Because at the end of the day, when you do this little two a minute and a half exercise, so you did it for a minute in the morning, minute and a half at night, here's what's great. When you go to sleep at night, and your theta brainwaves take over, you'll be reprogramming yourself to turn your reticular activating system towards feeling this way. And Jim, this is not mine, this is Jim Quick. Be grateful for the experience you had today. Because in the beauty of that, you actually will feed your mind, body, and spirit. And as you sleep at night, all the neurotoxins, as you go into REM state, and you're deep in theta, will actually be eliminated from your neural pathways. So you actually get to realize your true ideal life. And Eric, you said this earlier, people get aggravated when they have an expectation 
and this is their life conditions, and they're trying to close this gap. You get to change your focus so that now all the things that you're trying to move away from that we're trying to avoid, you're automatically moving away from those because you're moving all towards all the things that you need. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love, 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 love that. Hey, have you guys noticed? Like, I keep looking down here. I'm riding a mile a minute. All these checkisms that are coming in at a hundred miles an hour. So I hope you are too. And thank you, Facebook friends who are posting in the comments. We love to see them uh, there. Love, love the engagement from you guys. Uh, that's that's phenomenal. Thanks. I, I wrote that. that means a lot. Means a lot to uh, to us here. Absolutely. Um, I love I love the word that you said. A meaning maker. Yes. Um, I, I love that because I think, I think, you know, we can get caught up in putting meaning to things that we really should just dismiss, mm. but because our brains get into spaces of which we're, we're trying to find justification. We're trying to find, um, make sense of things. We're trying to, to figure out, yes. uh, things, right. Puzzles, as you said earlier, um, can we can we touch into that meaning maker just a little bit? Because sure. I think that's I think that's really key. Because as things are coming at us, and I'm going, I'm looking for the elephant. What meaning is behind this? I'm looking for this. What is that? What does that mean? And then I have these I have these meaning makers. Uh, Facebook uh, person just said such a great question. What is the meaning we are giving it? Yes. So before Chuck answers, get ready. Get ready. It's coming. Here we go, Chuck. <laughs> Actually, it's really simple. We give meanings to things because it helps our brain justify how we're feeling. So it's kind of the difference between chicken and the egg, cart and horse, which comes first. So when we get to decide where our emotional center is, and that's where we're actually turning our focus, what you'll start to find is that it actually changes how, at what level your needs are being met. And this is an important one it will actually shift what your wants are. See, wants and needs, they may sound synonymous, but they're actually very different. When your needs are being met at a very high level, your wants shift. Hmm? Let's test the theory. There's five innate human needs. Air, water, food, shelter, love and connection. I'll say them again. Air, because you can only go minutes without it. Water, because you can only go days without it. Food, you're going to go weeks without it. Shelter, which is required in order for you to have a home. This creates security. It's a place to lay your head, decompress, rebuild, grow, sustain yourself. Love and connection is the defining fact de facto. If you are not loved within the first five minutes that you come into this earthly plane, you will perish. It's called failure to thrive syndrome and any pediatric nurse or physician can tell you this. True story. Now, here's where it gets interesting. And this comes from my mentor, Tony Robbins. And Tony Robbins says there's six human needs. There's certainty, i.e. security. There's uncertainty, which really means that there's variety because if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, mm -mm. Probably not going to happen. There's significance and people give significance a bad rap. But the truth is, if you don't feel significant, necessary, vital, needed, that really affects your psyche because you're not respecting yourself and no one else will respect you either. The last couple are love and connection and then growth and contribution, which the last two are more spiritual. But the only one that crosses over between the essential needs and the human needs is love and connection. This is how important to Eric's point in the beginning of this conversation, relationship, communication. This is the area wars have been fought over this. I mean, there have been relationships and empires have been toppled because of relationships. Don't believe me? Cleopatra, Mark Anthony, Napoleon. We can go on and on. The royal family. I mean, it's like, whoop, okay, yeah. the craziness. Now, why go there? It's all meaning. It's all meaning. How many times have you gotten a text from someone on this little bugger of a device and all of a sudden you're like going, huh, I wonder what they meant by that. It wasn't a rude or disconcerting message, but it was so generalized that your mind starts like going, 
and it's like, okay, was that positive or negative? What do they mean by that? Oh, why didn't they? Or how about you text someone and they don't text you back within five minutes? You're like going, huh, too busy, are they? Wondering what they're doing. Wait a second. You know. And I'm not going, none of that's even true. What if they were in a board meeting and they couldn't pick up the phone? What if they were indisposed? What if they're in a MRI CAT scan machine and they're not allowed to have any electronics near them? We don't know. We don't know everyone else's life conditions, yet we will extrapolate the craziest meanings for different things. So ask yourself this question. When you start going down that rabbit hole of indiscretion and judgment, remind yourself, you can be curious or critical. Which are you deciding to be? Because if you're critical, you're judging. Mm -hmm. If you're curious, you're going to ask very inquisitive questions. And they normally come from that most beautiful part of you, which is like, I hope they're okay. I hope all is all right. I'll check in with them later. Because is it life-threatening or life-altering right now? And I go, probably not. And the truth is, you don't know what the truth is. You know, from your perspective in that moment, the meaning you gave to something because you thin sliced it, as Malcolm Gladwell would say. And there's a tipping point where we made this decision. It's like, ooh, okay. Wait, eh. I go, oh, oh, you're trying to find the balance in it again. I go, it's moving. There's synergy. So you're trying to hit a target that's moving, and your brain's like, going, I got it 100%. Nope. They're not being faithful. And you're like, what? Here's why. Eric, we all have rules for everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone goes, oh, I love them unconditionally. And I'm like, what? really? <laughs> With zero conditions, no expectations, really? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they go, well, you know, just surprise me. I love surprises. And I go, do you really? Are you one of those people you love surprises? Surprise, you're being audited by the IRS. They're like, oh no, I don't like that surprise. Well, what are you doing to me, Chuck? I go, oh, you said you like surprises. I just thought I'd give you a, a, a doozy. No, we like the surprises we like to get. Yeah. And so to your point, when we really change this modality, and it, it literally is a one millimeter shift, Eric, I mean, it's, it's the craziest thing. In fact, I love what you said, and thank you for that gift to everyone listening. When you shift one millimeter and you go on for a week, a month, a year, six months, nine months, more, five years, you're like, going, holy smokes, that one millimeter change changed my entire paradigm as to what my reality is. And here's the other part, and I will I, I will stop here because we could I could ramble all day about this. I love this topic. Your energy, who you are, you resonated a frequency. Yeah. And when people are coming to your sphere, it's not because of your influence, it's due to the gravity that you create when you're resonating at this frequency, because it's like a beacon. And it's like just the right frequency, it's the right wavelength of light, the sound, energetic, intuition, impression. And what I love about this is that it attracts people to you. And you go, I don't even know. I just ran into this person. I go, you just think you did. The universe conspired because you were actually putting that frequency out. And now people showed up and you're like going, I never even would have looked for them before. I go, no, the old Chuck wouldn't. The old Eric may not have, but this guy who's showing up right now, who's present, not worried about pain of the past or fear of the future. They're living in this presence that we call the present, which is now. It's a gift. That's why it's called the present. All love and connection is now. Oh. Oh, love that. Love that, Chuck. Thank you so much for diving in to that with the meaning. Absolutely phenomenal. Love that uh, some, somebody put in to the comments, uh, ants and, uh, the automatic negative thoughts. Uh, yes. so I'm going to assume that that person 
is speaking of my Facebook group, the Empowered Family Network, because mm. I have been doing a series on conquering your negative thoughts with Dr. Daniel Amen, and I've been going live from the car in the parking lot at school uh, doing that. So, so yes, we're giving it meaning, and that's exactly what this person is talking about, the automatic negative thoughts. I can yes. give the automatic negative thoughts meaning mm -hmm. to what it is that is coming to me in what I'm thinking or what I'm feeling, or I can give it that perspective of my internal, I'm going to be okay with this, or just not give it meaning. I, I'm not going to attach any meaning to it because I don't need to. That right. is my choice. And when I choose to say or do, because it's based on my frequency level, it's based on what I want to to achieve. It's based off of how I want to go out and face the world today, bring yes. the best of me, not the rest of me to walk into those classrooms, give these kids air, water, food, shelter, loving connection from me, from my internal me. And these kids are going, we, we don't know what to do with you, Mr. S. Like you're always happy. You're always crazy. Like what is wrong with you? And I'm like, man, I am, I am here. I am doing it. I am living it. I am a champion of power, hope, energy, and love. You want some? Here you go. Hey, because it's free. Yeah. There's, there's no, here's the deal. There's no cost to greatness. Nope. There, there isn't. Being you is the easiest thing to be. And yet people make it the most aggravating, frustrating, like, oh, life altering experience of martyrdom. Oh, you don't know what it's like to be me. And I go, I can only imagine that being you is remarkable. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Like, really? Are you broken? Yeah. Let's look. And am I going, no, I don't see, no, there's no brokenness. There can be disappointment, yeah. there can be aggravation, and here's the truth. The only time, and I very rarely use always or ne you know never or only, I'm gonna say it, the only time you suffer is when your complete myopic concentration is on you and you alone. Because it's, how do I feel about this? What do people think of me? And I'm like going, wait, that, but you just said, Yes, I, how you think other people are viewing you and you don't even know their truth. You've given it meaning because they're not like, oh, liking you on Facebook. And I go, oh, <laughs> is that the most important thing <laughs> that, that you're liked on Facebook or that you have yeah. this many followers on Twitter or Instagram, that you're an influencer? I go, what if you're just a really good person? What if? You speak your truth and you are an authentic soul who's vulnerable and shares their thoughts and feelings without judgment of yourself or others. What kind of world would we be living in right now with all this polarization, irrespective of political affiliation, race, religion, creed? I'm a Japanese Irish guy married to a Nicaraguan. My mother was a teacher in Japan. My sister is a teacher. My father was in the military for 30 years. I'm an entrepreneur and educator. That's what I do. I love it. For me, this is, if I could engage with Eric every day, bring it, baby. Because tell you what, we're going to be like Wonder Twin Powers Activate. We are going to go ahead and turn the world on its head. And here's why. The world gets better. Sharing is caring. That's the truth. I have goosies even just talking about it. When you make yourself small, please, if you take away anything for this conversation today, the relationship with yourself is so important. And it took me 30 some odd years to figure this out, by the way. So I'm a lifelong learner and I'm a slow learner in some regards. When they say repetition is the mother of all skill every day and twice on Sundays. So I'm just telling you, it, it, it's taken me a minute. And with the love of other people who I attracted into my life, because when Chuck Hogan is being his best, he'll always do his best. Now, that doesn't mean I'm getting all A's. It doesn't mean that I'm setting world records. It doesn't mean that I'm, you know, making it rain $100 bills. It doesn't mean that I have a McLaren sitting in the driveway. What it means is 
I'm a good man. I'm a loving God and gift from God. I am a happily married man of 36 years with three amazing young adults. I have friends like Eric. I'm part of this community. I get to speak to you all. Whew, how blessed am I? And your entire frequency changes when you are just grateful, just grateful. So if you're questioning your own integrity for a moment, Put your hand on your heart and just take a couple deep breaths. You're above ground, my friend. You're drawing breath. And that means you have the ability of creating change in yourself and others. Simply by acknowledging yourself. This beautiful apparatus that beats over 100,000 times a day. You didn't ask for it. It was gifted to you. It was gifted to you. The universe conspired to create greatness in you. And I'm here to tell you, you may not always feel like you're a million percent, but you're not broken at all oh, that's amazing i love it i love it um wow wow i just love this conversation chuck oh. thank you so much for for being here and going uh into this with me uh we've we've talked about uh our our internal a lot um and and i think it was uh it was so valuable. I, I, the conversations on in, in the chat, people are just loving it. So I thank us, you know, for for going into this. Um, we're we're kind of. I'm thinking about the communication piece, if if mm -hmm. we can for a minute, right? Sure. Because now when now when I am in truly in this place of understanding what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling, right? And I'm having I'm having this connection now, right? Because this is both connected, right? And I know that I am bringing the best of me as I'm walking out that door, as I'm, no, I'm sorry. When an alarm goes off, mm -hmm. that's when the best of me begins. No, sorry. The night before when I'm getting into bed and I'm saying my gratitude and, and I'm going into how how kick butt was I today, not in a place of arrogance, but of celebration. What Definitely. what did I do well today? What happened well today? What can I repeat tomorrow? What and, and I'm going into that whole rest routine. Now the alarm goes off, my rise routine begins to happen. I'm now getting into that space where I'm like, I am ready to go attack this day with more love, peace, joy that I can even compact and stuff inside me. I'm ready to blow this out the door and go. Yes. Now I show up to wherever it is, the grocery store, the gas station, to school, to wherever, and the people that I come in contact with, right? Yes. So now the communication piece we bring to the table of saying, listen, now that I have all of this in alignment, mm -hmm. in this synchronicity of harmony, now I'm going out. Let's talk. Let, we, let's talk for a couple of minutes here on how much different now my communication is when I'm aware of what I'm giving meaning, what I'm not giving meaning. You yes. see where we're going, friends and family? Yes. All right. We're going now. Let's go. Let's go, Chuck. We're in it now. Where so, does this communication begin to really be um, be impactful, if you will? Well, so there's a couple facets to that, Eric. A great segue. So number one, only 7% of communication here, listen clearly, 7% of communication is verbal linguistic communication. That's it. 7%. So people go, what is more important? I said, it's not what's said, it's how it's said. Tonality, pace, inflection, intensity, the energy, and the authenticity with which something is delivered. So if you go, yeah, I love you. Yeah. Oh, thanks. That was overwhelming. You're the most important person in my life. Are you freaking kidding me? Like, I mean, really? Yeah. So there's an age old saying, people forget what you said. They'll even forget what you did. They'll always remember how you made them feel. Thank you, my Angelou. And on the other side, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, no one cares what you have to say until they know how much you care. So to Eric's point, be in a state where you're present because if you are and i'm going to be very very devious dubious for a moment and devious if you're conniving and you're being a 
transactional person you're giving to get horse trading, that's going to be a short term relationship. Because at some point in time, unless you're in rapport with someone and you know what their needs are, you're going to be giving them what you think they want. And this will be very short lived. Because <coughs> in the interim, they go, Oh, I was impressed. You know, good guesser. And I was like, uh, I'd rather be good than lucky. So the only way to communicate properly is to build rapport with someone. That means, and, and this is going to get a little NLP for a moment, so just bear with us. You can actually use several different techniques. These techniques you've been doing since you were a little kid. You just didn't know it. They didn't have a name to them. One is called matching and mirroring. So you'll actually watch someone else, and you'll see them. And then you see kids do this all the time. And what do they do? Now 20 kids are all going... And then one laughs and they all start laughing. They're, they're doing this because it's a natural progression. So there's several different ways that we learn. Number one, you fake it till you make it. So you'll watch someone else and how'd you learn how to walk? You watched other people. Then all of a sudden you started rocking back and forth. Some of you were better at rocking than others. Some of you were better at crawling than others. Some of you just freaking stood up and started taking off. Okay, yes, I, I know my my... 20, now 23 year old, nine months. And we're like, what's he doing? And then all of a sudden he's like, Pew! Pepe Le Pew, he's gone. I'm like, where'd he go? So why do I go there? It's like Montessori. We all advance at different paces, but we all go through the same process. We fake it till we make it. We face it as we make it because you're going to fall. You're going to trip. You're going to get some rug burns and you don't care. Why? Because and the pain goes away, but the progress, ooh, and the possibilities, ooh. Okay, so now you can see how this formulation is starting to work. And then you get to this point of what we'll call some, I will just say, some experience. And we call this faithing it as we make it. Because I've got some faith. I've got some skills now. I know how to do, you know, second grade math, although this new math is killing me, by the way. But, you know, outside of that. And then we get to this point where you're like going, we believe as we achieve where you have so much cumulative belief in self and there's social feedback from this, from people we love. So Eric had this beautiful saying, he goes, his inner circle, please, please, please note this. The five people you spend the most time with is who you will become. This is not hyperbole. This is not theory. This is fact. And the reason why those top five people and, and these are people you may not speak to every day, by the way. So this is going to sound a little controversial, and I'm going to say it anyway. Love your family, choose your friends. Because mm -hmm. they're not the same group of people. There are some people who are not in your inner circle or your cabinet that are family members. You'd love for them to be, but they may not have the level of aptitude as you continue to grow. And it's not that they're bad people. Love them. They're beautiful, amazing souls. We get to meet people where they're at. Don't try and force them to be something they're not and don't hold them down and suppress them and go, oh, you're not good enough. No, love them for who they are. And believe people when they tell you who they are. It's so important. So that communication really has more to do with who you are, how you show up in the state that you're in. Because it will change your entire level of communication and dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that, Chuck. Thank you so much. What a beautiful description of how we can tie all of this uh, in today to that communication, how we can tie in uh, everything that we've talked about. What a great, what a great way to uh, to wrap this up. I know time is fleeting. Unfortunately, we should just we should have just like earmarked another hour. Uh, together on the show, but we'll definitely have to do this again. Uh, for please. Uh, Chuck, please remind everyone where they can find you again. Oh, please. please. Thank you. You can literally check us out. We have a wonderful website that shows all the experiences that we curate. We travel together, we learn together, and we thrive together. And it's called YBLnow.com. Awesome. Awesome. And then uh, friends and family, you know where to find me, Energetic Life Now on all the social media platforms. Also my private Facebook group, Empowered Families Network. Please come check us out there. Uh, this has been an absolute joy and a gift to have you here, Chuck. 
Thank you with all my heart for being here and love you so much for that. Uh, today's show can, is also uh, heard on the Spanglish Radio Network. Please check it out at spanglishworld.ca. For all the news and programming Spanglish World, watch it, hear it, read it, download it, live it. Thanks, you guys, for being here. We'll see you soon. <laughs>